Wonderful, thank you. Uh, my name is Jay Pelletier. I'm a security compliance technical specialist here at Microsoft. And today's topic is uh, Department of Defense Zero Trust Strategy Workbook. Um, I'm first gonna go over uh, some background about how the workbook was, uh, was built, what the purpose of the workbook is, some of the challenges it addresses for our customers, uh, as well as the audience. Who is, who, who's actually the user and consumer of the workbook and, and, and why is it useful? Uh, followed uh, after that, uh, I'll be followed by uh, Torin Lim, my colleague Torin Lim, who's gonna go into uh, a, a much deeper dive and we'll go into all the functionality of the actual workbook itself. So with that, uh, Torin, if you can um, uh, share the workbook screen, if you can. Absolutely. Thanks, buddy. Great, as you do that, um, I can start digging in, Torin, as you do that. Um, so essentially what we have created, it's a, it, was a, it was a collaborative effort around the strategy that came out November uh, 2022, the Department of Defense Zero Trust Strategy. And when this strategy came out, a lot of our customers were coming to us being a, you know, a leader in Zero Trust and they were opening up this strategy. And the first thing they noticed, number one, it's a 30 page strategy. It has some amazing diagrams and the pillars aligned, much like um, our Microsoft Zero Trust pillars. As you can see across the bottom here, the pillars are displayed in the workbook. Um, so what we did was they, they opened up the strategy. They 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 noticed it was you know overwhelming. Thirty pages. You've got 152 actions and activities that they needed to configure in their environments, whether it be through Microsoft or other technologies by 2027. Um, so that's the challenge that our Department of Defense currently has today with zero trust is is achieving the zero trust. This very objective. Uh, uh, guidance around zero trust uh, from their leadership. So the workbook was born. Uh, so with that challenge, we we created a, a Sentinel workbook. Those of you who know Sentinel know that workbooks are essentially um, dashboards and they solve problems for customers. So this is one of thousands of dashboards available, you know, in our content hub. So it is in our content hub finally, <laughs> and we're excited to say that it's it's there. If you go into content hub, it's 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 titled uh, the DOD Zero Trust Strategy Workbook, as you see it there. Um, however, this isn't a workbook that we, you know, envision just plopping in our customers' laps, right? Although if they have some sort of, um, you know, if they're, uh, you know, Sentinel experts, for sure, they'll be able to work pretty well on it. Um, but the idea is really to help the customer along the journey of maturing their Zero Trust through the workbook, governing, managing and taking actions through the workbook and helping them mature their zero trust. Now, if you're thinking, well, this is just for the Department of Defense, my, my commercial customer doesn't care about this or my, my FedSiv customer doesn't care about this. What we're seeing is the, uh, the workbook is being adopted beyond the DOD. Um, we've dubbed it uh, military grade zero trust because a lot of our commercial customers are leaning into this saying, you know, if this is if this framework is good enough for the Department of Defense, it's it's, it's good enough for me, right? So, uh, so we have a lot of uh, a lot of other customers outside the DoD leveraging the workbook itself um, because they kind of align to the pillars as well as the it, more importantly the actions that they needed to take um, to achieve zero trust, and that's exactly what this this workbook kind of uh, helps out with. Now, the audience we've designed the workbook to is um, everything from your CISOs and your leadership. Uh, and Torn's going to show some of those visualizations that are important to them, to the men and women who are in charge of actually, you know, turning and configuring and developing the solutions or work products or um, artifacts that support the actions and activity. For example, inventory, a device inventory, user inventories. Those are some of the actions and activities that are required 
um, you know, some of the obvious ones as well, like a multi-factor authentication being turned on and those sorts of things. So uh, this allows uh, those those folks to actually track, prioritize, see the things they're doing right, and then be able to focus on areas that they want to improve on. So um, with that, before I start to we start to dig in further, any questions at all? We we can take them live in the in the chat window or. Um, I'm I think our team is handling a behind the scenes right now. We're cool. good. OK, great. All right, so with that, Achorn, you want to, uh, you know, dive in and maybe Absolutely. start to do kind of a harbor door deep dive? Sure, sure. <laughs> Thanks, sure. buddy. So as, as Jane mentioned, um, you know, we built this workbook to simplify Zero to Trust. You know, ourselves, uh, several folks, members of our team, uh, our greater team actually worked directly with Mr. Resnick and company at the DOD CIO uh, Portfolio Management Office, uh, specifically around Zero Trust. And, uh, you know, we, we worked very closely with them. They provided us some you know, some previews of, of what they were thinking. Uh, we, of course, uh, went ahead and took the liberty of addressing it and mapping those to our specific tool sets around, you know, Microsoft 365, uh, our Sentinel, you know, sensor capabilities, along with our Defender for Cloud solution as well. So, um, of course, on top of many other solutions uh, across the M365 stack as, uh, in addition to that. So, uh, what we did is, you know, we took the verbiage directly from the UDCIO. So, uh, the, the pillars you see here, you know, you've got user pillar, device, application and workload, data, networking environment, automation orchestration, you got visibility and analytics. All these are one for one, and I'll show you here shortly. You know, they're, they're taken directly from the guidance, the strategy that was actually published in uh, November of last year. So uh, let's let's kind of dive into the user pillar, for example. And here we have just an example, right? User inventory uh, is one of the call outs. These are actually mapped to the 45 overarching capabilities. And you'll see kind of further as we dig or dive deeper, um, kind of how we match or meet all 152, but really looking at it from an approach of 45 main capabilities just to avoid the clutter. Uh, you know, we, we thought that, you know, I guess uh, expanding on that through other methods would essentially achieve the same outcome. So uh, what we have here is we had the description and these descriptions are actually called out directly from uh, the strategy itself along with the outcomes and the impact. But what we have here, as Jay mentioned before, is how do we track this or how do we, you know, uh, attest to, you know, do have we met this or how we, you know, uh, go out and actually go forth and, and do these things, right? So here we have an implementation status. And if you click on this drop down, it gives you options, right? If it's not implemented by default, it's you know set at zero percent. But as you go through your process, right, as the soft folks or the folks, the engineering folks go out, or even you know the CISOs and CIOs that, uh, of the world go out there and actually attest or assess where they're at with zero trust, they can mark the status and track that here. And I'll kind of, you know, later on I'll also show you how this all ties in together. But you have various options, not, not implemented, implement, implemented, and also alternate implementation. This is very key that we, uh, as, as Jay touched on earlier, we understand that folks aren't always using Microsoft specific capabilities or, or, or tools. So we have to, you know, have that capability here for folks to, you know, attest and still meet that requirement, but also through a third party or some other solution. Uh, in addition to that, you know, if you're starting work on that, you have planned, which is essentially, you know, it's, it's started, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, in addition to that, we have out of scope. You know, if it's if it's out of scope, it, you know, if, uh, capabilities not there, things like that, you can account for that uh, using these various options here. Uh, in addition to that, right, you can do implementation dates. So when you have it implemented, or when you start that, you can you know mark dates and track that uh, throughout the life cycle of your you know your zero trust journey, so to speak. And in addition to that, right, if you're doing some type of alternate implementation, or if there's some caveats you want to notate, uh, you can certainly enter those notes here in a text field and uh, account for things that way. Um, one of the things we did when we built this workbook was actually you know let our DoD customers see it to get some feedback up front. So, you know, before V.1 of this workbook, we would be passed it on to several DoD customers just to get that initial feedback. And one of the things they, they came back to us with was, hey, you know, I, I, I like how you call out all these resources, things like that, which I'll get into, but, you know, what specific overarching products, you know, from a Microsoft standpoint, tie into these, you know, these solutions or these capabilities and activities, how do we meet those? So we actually 
took the liberty of mapping our specific solutions to each one of these you know capabilities and you call out you know each one of them and i'll i'll, I'll select one two here you can see that there are different you know solutions that map specifically from a microsoft standpoint to uh, meet those uh, overarching capabilities and activities so that's essentially that in a nutshell um, and i'll kind of go over uh, our you know our, our visuals here here shortly but any questions up to this point uh, i'm not sure if Dennis or anybody has uh, anything in the chat come up so far? Nothing that we haven't addressed. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you. So moving on to, you know, Sean, can I interrupt you for just a second? Do absolutely. you mind zooming in just a bit? Absolutely. OK, thanks. Does that look does that look better? That's great. Yeah. Awesome. So moving on, uh, you know, we give you these you know, this way to track and and you know jot down dates, enter any any pertinent notes. Uh, we also give you, of course, the solutions themselves that kind of uh, tie into the specific you know requirements. But how do we you know validate that, right? Or how do we go about doing this and making sure that we we are implementing things correctly? Uh, so what we have here, once you click on these individual you know, capabilities uh, respective to each pillar, we actually have a visual section, right? So this contains any portals. In this case, it, it contains portals specific to Department of Defense and also government portals, but also a uh, what we did is we also curated a, in a specific order of, how, of implementation, so to speak, specific resources that will actually help you, um, you know, implement and go forth and do uh, you know, the, the activities that are required to meet those uh, requirements by the mandate. So uh, in addition to that, we also have sample visualizations, right? So if this one is user inventory. You know, we have samples here that will help you by leveraging Sentinel and the, the data that, that's coming in from uh, the telemetry we get from our various, you know, sources within Azure, uh, also within our M365 stack, uh, we can actually glean those signals and help folks actually attest, hey, you know, am I actually doing this right? So leveraging these examples here uh, as a starting point uh, to meet those zero trust requirements is key. So we included several of those in here to kind of get you guys started. Uh, one thing we wanted to note too, though, is that you know each one of these, uh, this workbook is an Azure Monitor workbook, and uh, those workbooks are fully customizable, right? So uh, this again is meant to be a starting point, right? Not a final destination, so to speak. But it's a starting point to help you, you know, get a baseline of where you're at, and also we we fully expect our customers and our you know our partners to go in and likely tweak this to the customer because every customer is different. Yeah. But again, to, yeah, to, ahead, to pull on that thread more, right, Chorn? Every customer is different, and so Absolutely. it's not all about Microsoft either, right? So the ability to tag and label where these are these controls or these activities are being met outside of microsoft stack is is very it's, it's doable and achievable through the workbook right. uh, and the reporting but also the ability to show those visualization possibly coming from those other tools through the connectors and sentinel one of the things that always comes up it came up in the chat window as a question um can we automate some of this yes part of the workbook we can show some of this auto automated being being automatically brought in and the visual represent representations being brought in automatically to show that this could this activity is being met um as well as uh potentially uh adjusting the the status bar on some of these uh where it applies so again it's a workbook uh this is a starting point as torn mentioned and so customizing it is expected it should be um uh, anyhow, Chorn, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted oh, to make 100%. sure we, we honed 100%. in on that. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, again, as Jay and, uh, you know, we, we touched on, right? Um, please, you know, take this as a starting point and then, you know, again, customize it to your heart's content. Um, you know, it, it, it does frame, and the, the intent of it is to frame around the DOD CIO Zero Trust strategy. But, you know, these visuals will likely change, right? We, we understand there's third party ingest that we can also leverage here. So uh, I fully expect to see a lot of third party stuff here ultimately. So again, um, this is just an overview of kind of how in, in, as we go through these various different pillars, it's the same look across the board. Um, so, you know, again, sample visualizations across the board, uh, the same look and feel, try to keep it consistent across the board in terms of 
uh, you know, how to uh, track and attest to implementation dates, notes, and so forth. So. And yes, it's going to be available in our GCC um, and GCC high environments, of course. Yeah, it should be. It's in the content hub there. Currently. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good point, yeah. Jay. So it's definitely, uh, it's already out there. We verified it's in commercial, both commercial and in our government clouds now. So um, it is there in content hub uh, for folks to start using, you know, out of the gate now. So good call out, Jay. All right, so the next thing I want to cover is kind of how do we tie this all together as we're going through, as we're assessing, as we're tracking, you know, attesting to, you know, where we're at in our environment, right? So uh, we have this, what we call zero trust assessment tracker. Um, and what you see here is actually a maturity score. And what this is, it's actually an aggregate score of all the different pillars as you go through and each one of those pillars, click on each of the 45 capabilities. As you fill those out and populate that, um, this score will you know, reflect, it's an aggregate average essentially of all those uh, you know, implementation statuses as you go through that, that process. Um, from here too, we have what we call the Zero Trust Assessment Tracker. Uh, and I'll, let me minimize this and make it a little smaller. Uh, but what you can see, and you know, again, this is feedback directly from the DOD. Um, you can see, you know, each status for each of the you know, respective pillars, so to speak. Um, also, the, any dates that you entered here, along with any notes, right? Um, but one thing that we want, we heard a lot from the DOD customers is that they like stoplights, right? Green, red, yellow. So um, we accounted for that here. So just kind of a graphical representation, a visual representation for where folks are at at any given pillar. So as you go through these and you populate those in each of the pillars, uh, they will be reflected here. And another thing too, um, we also uh, accounted for was reporting, right? So th this report here, as you expand on this, you can actually export this uh, report or tracker directly to Excel. So you can take this at any given point in time throughout you know, your, your, your process or your, your journey, so to speak, and export that uh, for any type of reporting capabilities or reporting, you know, uh, bring it into something like Power BI, for example, or whatever you need. Uh, there is the ability to actually uh, report and print out, uh, so to speak, from, uh, you know, as you go throughout. Uh, yeah, so, so one of the things the I mentioned earlier on um, is that, the, you know, when our customers first, when they're, especially the DoD customers saw the, the strategy come out at first, it was overwhelming to them. And when they <laughs> looked at the strategy very closely, they, you know, they could see things they were doing uh, right. <laughs> Um, not everyone, you know, we've got any any kind of, uh, you know, basic uh, cyber hygiene has elements of zero trust in them. And so helping them understand, assess, measure where they are and then be able to prioritize through those stop uh, stoplights um, is, is, is extremely beneficial to them and, or anyone going through the zero trust, you know, journey or um, and, and that's you know, case in point. I think I may have mentioned this earlier on when the strategy came out. We were very excited because it takes a very objective approach so we can measure all these actions and activities and whether or not they're doing them before that um you know our customers saw this as like a mindset and there was a lot of fluffy words around it a journey a, a framework an architecture where now we're able to really measure and help them mature over time uh you know through the work through this workbook so a great question to your customers is you know how are you measuring zero trust oh you're doing zero trust you're throwing around like buzzword bingo bingo how are you actually <laughs> measuring it uh, that you're actually doing it right so it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to to be able to show how how our department of defense is doing that awesome so the next thing i wanted to show uh really was this uh table or chart that uh table <laughs> a chart that we actually built um, based on the, you know, all the 45 capabilities. Um, what we did is we actually aggregated all the different pillars, all the different capabilities and put it into a table. So as you go through that process, if you want a shortcut, so to speak, uh, this is actually an idea that um, our, our fearless manager, Lily Davudian suggested is, hey, is there a quick way to, for folks to reference these things? So, you know, instead of clicking on the individual pillars, for example, if you want to just look at, the specific resources and get down to the nitty, nitty gritty, so to speak. Um, we have it broken out by this uh, zero trust capability alignment table here. So again, the, we have the actual capability itself, the respective Microsoft products, uh, and also the respective DoD portal, 
in addition to you know the actual resources that are one for one what you will find under each of the respective capabilities found in these pillars so yep. uh, just a nice to have uh, again that's also we, we ran that by some of our customers and they were very pleased to see that just sort of a, a shortcut nice to have so to speak uh, for them hey, to George, use George, yes, can you open that can you open that view up one more time because I, I i really love using this too because um, as you can see, we, Torn and I try to do as little PowerPoint as we can. We started with one slide today on you. So, um, but everyone's familiar with the, those awesome PowerPoint slides that show our capabilities uh, aligned to the various zero trust right, um, principles in, in delivering them. Uh, so we've got slides and all these backup things that we have internally that we show our customers. Here, let me show you that. Let me show you that in Sentinel. <laughs> Open up your Sentinel. Show them where this, uh, where the capabilities align, the connectors, the the recommended nice resources and guidance to enable you. Um, this is just a great spot. If you don't want to use PowerPoint, you're against PowerPoint. This is just another spot to go. You can even just use it just for that purpose, right? Showing the um, the alignment, right, of those zero trust activities to our to our product stack, to our capability stack. Just want to point that out. <laughs> go ahead, Jordan. Uh, yeah, good so, call, Jay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the only other thing we wanted to show you just for, you know, again, a nice to have um, is what we have here. We actually have directly pulled from the uh, DDCA Zero Trust Strategy are the capabilities and activities uh, tables. So these are pulled, you know, directly from the guidance that's released publicly now. So if you want to go, you know, and see the actual capabilities in full, uh, there's a toggle here which says show DOD Zero Trust. Uh, by default, it's turned off, but of course, uh, you can actually select either the capabilities, which will show you the 45, you know, overarching capabilities, so to speak. And if you want to get down to the nitty gritty and, you know, see the 152 all up, uh, we also have that capability to see all 152 along with, you know, even the controls, the predecessors and successors for each one of those controls, along with the phases and durations that are called out in the strategy. Uh, and this is actually can be uh, viewed across the board. So when if I, you know, for example, if I go to uh, one of our pillars here, um, if I go down, it's still visible throughout the workbook. So again, that was just a nice to have An another customer asked uh, based on feedback. Uh, so we uh, decided to include that in V1 just because rather than flipping back and forth between documentation, uh, it's just, I think it always is nice to have that documentation readily available uh, if needed. So with that, all turn. yes, sir. I'm going to I'm going to bother you to kind of can you go can you back up and show where to find the workbook because some people Absolutely. like myself will click templates and they'll get yeah. frustrated and look down to, and so just just kind of show that nuance because yeah, I was like, there was a question in there and I and maybe people are having trouble finding it or just want to make sure they get taken care of there. So here this is just our demo environment. This is uh, we're in Microsoft Sentinel. So what I'll do is I'll select one of our the primary log analytics workspaces, right? In this case, it's our GovSentinel workspace in our demo environment. Uh, what we'll need to do is actually go to the Content Hub. So Content Hub is where we're putting a lot of our Sentinel-specific resources, not just you know workbooks, but also you know uh, queries, uh, playbooks, so on and so forth. Everything you'll find Sentinel-related is now moving uh, towards the Content Hub location. So. Uh, and here you'll find Content Hub and uh, simply just do a search, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, in our case, I'll just hit DOD uh, and you'll see our strategy workbook here. So if you click on this, for example, um, you'll actually see, you know, you can do the, do the template. Uh, in our case, we've already have it installed, but you can actually install that directly from here. And once you actually install it under workbooks, um, you can see essentially, um, you know, all the workbooks that you will actually have either installed or not installed, uh, they'll actually all appear here. Usually the ones that are installed will actually have a green uh, indicator next to the, to the left of it. Uh, if I actually go to my workbooks, for example, you'll see that that Zero Trust Strategy workbook is actually already installed in my environment. So this is that green toggle here. Is that uh, covered there, Jay? Oh, that's good, man. Uh, yeah, th there's a, an interesting one in the terms of the traceability capability for ATO, FedRAMP, or OSCAL, as well as looking for DOD uh, connection to ATO, SAR, and SSP. And one of the things that's related to that, it reminds me, uh, we just spoke to Randy Resnick last week, 
one of the phase feedbacks is, is where DOD uh, is going in terms of having a cross work with the zero trust activities to the 853, um, uh, NIST 853. So look for that. That's going to be coming out this summer. Um, that's when uh, they, they anticipate releasing the, the crosswalk with the strategy and the 853. So we're already speaking internally about how we're going to start aligning those. Um, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing, you know, some of these other others that you mentioned, Patrick, uh, Simon, in the in the chat window there. So, yeah, expanding it further, helping it align to other, um, you know, mandates and uh, and those sorts of things is is definitely on our radar. Absolutely. Well, that, that's pretty much it for the demo. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of open up to the rest of the questions. Yeah, one of them, one of them is mentioning, you know, how zero trust is kind of less of a to-do list and more about security and and helping them and guiding them along that journey. And that's the whole purpose of this, having this having this baseline, uh, a roadmap, uh, a simplification of a strategy uh, that make it that makes it actionable. Um, so yeah, we're in full agreement of that and, and helping to use the capability and to customize it for them. Um, a lot of what you see in the workbook, um, you know, it, it we can put automations around uh, things, uh, aspects of it, uh, but every customer is going to be different there. So if you build those in, um, you know, it's not going to apply for, for, we try to make it most usable for the most largest audience and number of customers and then be able to hone in and and tweak it as needed just like any and just like any of our workbooks truth be told so yes customer isn't it isn't using sentinel if a customer isn't using sentinel they will be able to install this in azure monitor that would i would have to look into have you ever deployed a workbook through azure monitor monitor directly yeah, so from the content yeah, yeah yeah in a nutshell this is an azure monitor workbook right just it just yep. happens to live within sentinel um, it, it is JSON, just like your, your Azure Monitor workbook. So it, it is using Azure Monitor workbooks as a backend. Now, have we done that directly in Azure Monitor? No, but I believe um, it, it should port over for the most part. Yep. Any other questions? Right. Uh, Dean's got, uh, we've got a one from Dean. It's an interesting one. Uh, why isn't this delivered through, why is this being delivered through Sentinel instead of Defender for Cloud? It seems like it'd be more uh, focused on uh, CSPM than on SIEMSOR and SOC operations. But, um, you know, pretty much all SOC operations are, are, um, are, the, are the doers and the practitioners. And so it definitely applies to them. But however, uh, you know, it, it gives us the advantage in terms of, not just having it focus on Microsoft's capabilities, right? Um, our customers use a myriad of different tools and capabilities that align and help them achieve zero trust. So it gives them that flexibility when it's not just Microsoft, um, more more so than I, I think the Defender for Cloud does, where it's you know your multi cloud it gives you that. But um, we're we're bringing less feeds from other other uh, capabilities and other yeah, providers. Yep. And also, right, and just to add on what Jay said, um, the ability to ingest that, you know, uh, the third party ingest, for example, are, 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 are connectors that are available for our first party stuff, also the third party stuff, right? So being able to, to centralize or synthesize those signals that are coming into you know, Sentinel from a SEM solution uh, capability. So the ability to report on that and have that data in a log analytics workspace and report on it, I think is one of the biggest reasons why uh, it just seemed natural to to leverage Sentinel because of all the signals that could be, uh, you know, sent to Sentinel to validate, right? The validation piece, uh, building your reports, building your visuals around that, and aggregating that data from not just Microsoft, you know, solutions, but also third party. Yeah, uh, I'll point out too. We always forget uh, sometimes to point this out that, you know, we're 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 the uh, from what we've seen, we're the only ones doing anything like this around the strategy, the DoD strategy. So we're pretty proud of that. Um, you know, there, there's 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 not really any assessments out there that aren't um, that that aren't quite frankly built yet. So we're at the we're at the forefront of of getting ahead of our competition in terms of some of this as well. 
And, and really, again, uh, the premise behind this and the ultimate goal is to make it simpler for folks. It's not, hey, you have to just use you know, Microsoft stuff, right? It's it's enabling the community. Uh, we know, you know, not just DoD, of course, you know, we were initially focused on the DoD customer, but also our commercial customers, right? Uh, Jay mentioned military grade zero trust. How do we make zero trust from an outcomes based standpoint attainable and trackable and reportable? Um, and also, how do we provide that guidance? You know, we can control what we control uh, from a Microsoft standpoint in terms of, you know, these are our solutions, how we would go about doing it. But that's, you know, again, it's a starting point. Um, we fully expect it again to be customized. But, you know, it, it's at least something that folks can leverage out of the gate to help them start that zero trust implementation journey to meet, you know, whatever requirements they have, whether it be DOD, you know, commercial, civilian, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, that's really the premise behind this. Right. Uh, one of the, we got an interesting one here. What types of non Microsoft feeds are built into this workbook to actually fill out the workbook? Is uh, this based around Microsoft native solutions and how many different data sources are required to fill out the entire workbook? So a couple of couple of interesting ones there in terms of yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that, yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, I mean, the, right out of the gate, you know, we we have our Microsoft stuff, you know, built in just because it's native and you know it's what we can control. Um, we do have again the capability. We don't have any third party built in per se because again it's it's different implementations across the board. And again, we couldn't really leverage our own customer data, so to speak, to to, to build this. Uh, so we are we were limited from that standpoint. So, but you know, we are uh, unlimited, right? On the data yeah, sources, we are, right? Yeah, uh, we are. Never, yeah. yeah. So all the connectors are potential data sources. They're all the 100%. connectors in Sentinel, and then obviously those customized ones where uh, you know we, logs, we, yeah. we can bring them in. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So again, yeah. So we, you know, out of the gate, it's, you know, we have our our native stuff uh, built in. But uh, again, the we've actually seen folks already start doing it. it they're pulling in the third party. You know logs. You know you, you mentioned Cisco. There's Palo logs you can pull in there. Uh, a lot of our customers have those solutions out there, and they're they're building a lot of the reporting around those. So those can certainly be pulled into this, and that's kind of what we're expecting. You know, out of the gate, uh, as folks start going through this process, they're going to start leveraging the third party stuff that they already have in place to to uh, also account for those as part of their their attestation, so to speak, and, and validation. What does the gap analysis report look like if there is one and can it be distributed to stakeholders? So yeah, we can export our reporting and the you know the holes and gaps, the uh, where your where you, you know your, our stoplight reporting can be can be exported and sent um, as needed. It can also be fed to other other capabilities or or reporting mechanisms that uh, your customer might be using. It can be put up on a sock wall. Um, there's a lot of different uses we can do there for the uh, for the report. All right, seems like our, our questions have slowed down a little bit. See, uh, Sonny has a, uh, somebody said they had a lot of folks ish, uh, having issues with downloading. Yeah, yeah uh, it's exceeding. Yeah, it looks like it's exceeding the uh, the limit. We have to kind of look into probably have to look into that torn. Yeah, I mean the workbook is a, a little large, but there, there's there's certainly workbooks out there that are a little larger. So there may be something uh, from a limitation standpoint uh, in terms of permissions that are logged out of the space. But yeah, definitely uh, there's a feedback um, uh, link on the workbook itself, or you you can reach out to us directly, uh, and we can certainly uh, address that for you. Okay, great. Okay, great, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I do think that's just about all the questions that have come in. The team's been doing a great job responding to them as well. Um, let me just make sure. Um, I'm not sure if you wanted to touch on this last question. Do the workbook workbook instructions provide guidance about the type of system logs that should be connected to achieve the goals? So, yeah. So that, that, that's a good question. So. A lot of that actually will likely fall on the resources section. So as you go through those resources, there are specific call outs to uh, you know, the, the products themselves. 
and in most cases uh, there are logs um, that tie into those the specific you know solutions that are called out and that's how we would essentially guide folks to on, on what to actually ingest and uh, in terms of validating and ensuring that they have those uh, you know solutions properly implemented in order to attest that you know that's fully been implemented in accordance with the uh, DoD strategy so to speak hopefully that answers the question yeah there's got a question in here in terms of uh, having a little anxiety over you know turning on this workbook is suddenly going to turn on and flip a switch where there's a uh, hefty overnight costs um, now turning on the workbook is free um, you could point it towards your existing data feeds that are coming into Sentinel and leverage those if you don't want, uh, you know, you know, obviously if there's others that you want to bring in to, uh, to populate the workbook and for other purposes for your team, those costs are going to, you know, incur. But using the workbook and leveraging the workbook on your additional feeds, it's not going to, it's not an added cost. It's a simple right. dashboard. Yep. It, it's only able to leverage the, the data that's in your log analytics workspace. If there's no data in there being ingested or very minimal, it's uh, you're not adding any additional cost there unless you're turning new things on, which is separate from the workbook, right? The workbook doesn't turn anything on specifically for you. It just provides guidance on how to turn things on and what to look for, and perhaps what what you know logs, other logs to look for if you want to validate that through visuals, things like that. But uh, there's nothing that's turned on automatically, so to speak, uh, from the workbook itself in terms of ingest. Yep, and I see still some of those workbook size questions coming in. I think the team's addressing those um, directly to those who are facing that issue. Um, anything else, Jay and Chorn, that you you feel needs to be addressed? I think you've you've given us some really great content. I think everyone's been very excited about this. Yeah, it was a, it was a collaborative effort across multiple security teams here at Microsoft, and yeah, we're we're excited about uh, having our customers, you know, benefit from it for sure. Thank you. Yeah, definitely a lot of excitement. And again, yeah, as Jay mentioned, right, a lot of folks, a lot of good folks across the board, not just you know, within Microsoft, but also in the DoD and even commercial community, right, uh, providing a lot of feedback. So definitely want to thank a lot of folks there uh, in, in, in addition to other folks, uh, you know, in, in the civilian world as well that helped contribute to this. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jay and Chorn, for presenting such valuable content, really, to the community. Um, thanks as well to our experts behind the scenes who helped to answer all the incoming questions that took place. And most of all, a huge thank you to our attendees for joining us today and for being an active part of our community. Um, in case we missed your question today or if you have additional questions, please visit us on our Azure Sentinel forum at aka.ms slash Azure Sentinel community. I'd also like to remind listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to join our public community at aka.ms slash security community. Lastly, we always love to hear your feedback on our webinars, so please take a moment to submit your feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. And again, thank you so much for being with us. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.